No lo protegeré. No lo protegeré en tu mundo. No, well, you, you probably don't know this, but uh, I've been in uh, what we call communications or radio or whatever for a very long time and had many adventures or many, you know, uh, things happen to me while I was there in this field, as we say. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things I worked uh, uh, for an organization called uh, Democracy Now was out of the Pacifica Network of uh, stations, uh, radio stations. It was a program, and at the time we were... Uh, well, at the time I was, I was hanging with them. I would every once in a while engineer for them for, for a while, but uh, it was a time in the, you know, the 2000s, the early 2000s, you know, we had a, a, a coup, what they call it a coup, a Christmas coup at the station. And it was like uh, really ugly, you know, you have one side against another, you know, the whole civil war kind of thing. And one of the programs was Democracy Now! This one, I'm wearing the t-shirt right now. Where this, see, this one says, Democracy Now! in Exile, the War and Peace Report. You know, uh, I'll tell you about that in a second, but let me just say this, what happened. So basically, in this school, as it were, the station manager kicked the, uh, kicked the program, you know, Democracy Now! out of the station. You know, she thought I would kick him out of the station, have no place to go. But you know, we got, we got some determined people <laughs> in the Pacific Network. And so what they did, we set up, uh, now we got Arrow making it, and they, they set up uh, the situation at a firehouse, a band an old firehouse, uh, in the garret of a firehouse. It was a community uh, television uh, or community uh, outreach kind of situation. They're in the Lower East Side, uh, it was actually Chinatown, right, on Lafayette Street, a couple of, well, one block, a couple of blocks, a block and a half below Canal Street. And, uh, and what we, what, what, what we set up the whole pro program and then we started broadcasting from there because it was a daily program, you know, came on about, uh, I guess that, about, what, that time was at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, oh, I forgot when it was. Anyway, it was an hour program. Um, and so anyway, um, so, you know, we were there and it just so happened at the time we just broke, it was a radio program. So we were set up there in this character, so the producer, myself, I'm the engineer behind the board. And that's, that's fine. Okay, well, one day, around about September 11th to be exact, well, September 11th, 2001, 9-11 as they say, uh, like I said, I think the program must have, I guess we was going on at 9 o'clock. Uh, anyway, about a little bit after 9, there's a phenomenon in New York City. They have these large metal grates, or iron grates on that thing. And so when a truck goes over it, you, you sort of feel the rumble wherever you are. You hear it and you feel it. Well, I, f I heard this kind of rumble overhead. The same kind of rumble that head down. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, your mind picks up things, but I'm on engineering a program, so I'm not paying attention to that. A little while later, uh, the uh, Keiko, the, one of the people that run the, this, uh, this outreach center, this uh, community center, she came up and said, you better turn on the television. You know, she came all quiet. Turn on the television. The World Trade Center just got hit by a plane. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So we are frantically now, I'm sticking a butt in my ear for, for the, the local news radio station, uh, CPS News Radio 88. Amy's running around doing whatever. She's trying to get, you know, because whatever we were doing, we had to stop. We had to start reporting on what's going on, because basically we're right there. I mean, the World Trade Center, basically, we're, we're here. World Trade Center is right there. Mm. <laughs> it's close. You can, you know, like that. But it was amazing. Uh, it was an amazing situation. Uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but uh, what was amazing to me is I got, and, and at the same time, I was still doing my radio program at the radio station that was down on Wall Street, which is even closer. In other words, here's, if we're here with democracy now, the radio station WBAI is over here. The World Trade Center is there. So I was still doing my program at the, at the at my regular weekly program, as well as doing this daily engineering. And uh, so I would have to walk, you know, there. And uh, I'm telling you that about the second, third night, it was amazing because you still had all this dust in the air. And you had the, the, the girders, it was like a science fiction set. They had a lot of lights there. So it really did look like a movie set, you know, it, but it's like, to scale, it was like real. But, uh, but
what was more interesting to me is like right after it happened, as it was happening, well, first thing you notice that there was no sound because they suspended all the air flights. And then there was no traffic really. You had a lot of emergency vehicles. But what's more interesting, more astounding, I would say, the word I want to use, is that when the towers came down, everybody was covered in this ash. They actually looked, looked like, no, I wasn't, I was inside, but they looked like ghosts. And I'm just thinking, you know, since that moment, a lot of the things that happen in the world is a reaction to that. Mm -hmm. Reaction to making these ghosts. So you had real ghosts because over 3,000 people perished in that, in that action. And, that's, and at the same time, all those people that were running away from the situation, they looked like ghosts. And the way that we are, the way this world is going right now, is like you're battling ghosts. So anyway, just run a series run year around this time. I put on my Democracy Now! NX uh, t-shirt, got the Union bud right there. And um, I just sort of kind of reflect, but not, not a whole lot. But to know how the world is going these days, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, this is one of those dispatches from the arts director emeritus uh, talking about a time in history that changed history. One person and a few people and a couple of planes, three or four planes, changed the history of the world. Because you got a bunch of reactionaries running around, reacting to this, reacting that, reacting that, and making a lot more ghosts. So this is one of those dispatches from the arts director emeritus. That would be me, T from the Patterson's taking the trench to bed. Let you know what I actually experienced. Mm -hmm. yeah.